Welcome Istinom. Last night Uniswap released details of the Uniswap version 3 protocol and this is something a lot of people, me included, have waited for a long time already and the question everybody has in their minds is does this change the market dynamics? Does it make every other decentralized exchange completely useless? Is it so good that it will suck the liquidity back on the Uniswap and back onto Ethereum network? And the short answer from what I uh, understand it after reading it for almost half a day now is no, I don't think it is good enough. Certainly it brings two unique things to the scene. Number one is it brings optimism layer to deployment. So basically bringing no fees on Uniswap trading, but that also has a downside. And the second thing is something called concentrated liquidity, which I will try to explain in this video. And those are the main features of Uniswap version 3. There are some other features as well as a little bit better gas handling for uh, layer 1 version of Uniswap uh, version 3, as well as it has better Oracle functionality and it has some better API stuff as well. But overall, it, in my opinion, it does not really solve the core issues of uh, decentralized exchanges and automated market makers like impermanent loss. So that is basically non-existent, the impermanent loss issue. So I will talk about these in this video as well. And just to, so you understand exactly what I talk about in this video, I highly suggest watching this video from Finematics. I've linked this in the description. It basically explains exactly all the features of Uniswap version 3 in an easy to understand manner. Unfortunately, it does not uh, explain the downsides of Uniswap version 3. So if you don't exactly understand what I'm talking about in this video, uh, watch this video first so you will have a better understanding exactly what the Uniswap version 3 will be. You can also read the blog post that they have released here that I will be referencing in this video as well. So let's talk about this uh, uh, Uniswap version 3 actual announcement post. So Uniswap version 3 will be launching on Ethereum mainnet on May 5th and the layer 2 deployment on Optimism will be coming a week or two afterwards. So at the end of May, we should have Uniswap version 3 on uh, layer 2 Optimism, which is great. That is basically the biggest uh, thing for Uniswap, uh, going for Uniswap. And I think a lot, if uh, there's still a lot of liquidity on Uniswap, I think a lot of product products and projects will still be launching on Uniswap as well. So that will still have a lot of, a lot of utility, but I don't think it makes uh, other uh, AMMs and other decentralized exchanges useless. Anyway, the features are concentrated liquidity, multiple fee tiers, and what it is supposed to bring is higher returns on people's capital who provide liquidity and lower slippage trade execution and reduce downside risk and also lower gas fees on version 3. Those are basically the biggest benefits here. And then they explain exactly what the features are. And I will try to explain this concentrated liquidity because this is the main feature of this Uniswap version 3. So with this, instead of you providing liquidity on the whole price range from infinity to zero, you can choose to provide liquidity on custom price ranges. And this is great for stable coins, but it is not great for anything else in my opinion. So here they ex explain that if you have two people who have $1 million worth of capital, and the other people uses the version 2 of Uniswap, they will gain the same amount of fees than that somebody who is only putting about $200,000 of the same trading pair, but who has provided liquidity on concentrated liquidity area. As long as the price is traded between this area, this person is making more money, about 5.44x uh, more money with the fees if they are providing liquidity during this area here. But the issue here is impermanent loss. And unfortunately, if you try to search impermanent loss in this uh, article, it is not explained. So some things in this video that I will talk about now is something that I just had to conclude on my own. So it is not official information because they don't do, do not talk about this in this post here. They talk, talk only about the good stuff and not about the bad stuff. So I'm here to talk about the bad stuff. And this is the active liquidity, which basically uh, when I read this, I was like, ah, okay. So impermanent loss is actually exaggerated with version three. It is not in, uh, uh, it, it is not lower. It is actually much, much more bigger issue now with version three than on version two. And I will try to explain soon why. 
So with active liquidity, if you provide liquidity for, let's say, $1,000 to $2,000, when the price moves outside that price range, your liquidity is removed from the pool and is no longer earning fees. So when, and <clears throat> uh, let me continue here, in this state, an LP provider or your liquidity is composed entirely of the less valuable of the two assets. So what this means is that, uh, let me actually draw it here. So this is the price strip. So if the price is uh, infinite here and it is zero dollars here, and if the price of Ethereum and you're actually providing liquidity with, let's say, ETH and USDC, if the price of Ethereum goes to zero, then you have zero dollars uh, at this end. And if the price of uh, Ethereum goes to infinite, you no longer have any uh, Ethereum, you only have USDC at this end. But if you provide liquidity from price range from $2,000 to $1,000 here, let me uh, add this here, $2,000 is here and $1,000 is here. If you provide liquidity on this trip and you earn more fees during this trip, what it also means is that as the price is getting towards this end, you only have USDC afterwards. So if the price reaches $2,000, you no longer have zero Ethereum going up. So if you believe you're, if you are bullish on Ethereum, this is not a good strategy because you no longer have any Ethereum above $2,000. You only have USDC at this point and you are no longer earning fees either. So if the price of Ethereum goes to $3,000, you have already been stopped out at this range. And if the price actually goes below $1,000, you no longer have any USDC, you only have Ethereum at this range. So there's that also that you are basically, uh, this is where you don't want to have Ethereum and this is where you want to have Ethereum, right? So this is basically the opposite of what you want to have if you are bullish on an asset. So for that reason, I don't think this is good for anything else except stable coins and for people who really do not believe the price potential of uh, an asset. So let me try to explain exactly how it works one more time here. So let's say you are providing liquidity here and the price is $1,500. $1,500. And if the price actually goes up, what it means is it is converting your ETH into USDC at the rapid pace. So if the price is, let's say, $1,750, at this moment, uh, at this, uh, uh, by the way, when the price was $1,500, you had 50% ratio of Ethereum and 50% ratio of USTC. But at $1,750, to my understanding, you currently have 75% of USTC already and only 25% of Ethereum left at this moment in time, which means that the impermanent loss is massive because from this uh, price point, $1,750, if the price goes to $2,000, you are only gaining the upside potential of 25% of your capital, which is remaining. And that is getting lower and lower and lower as the price goes on uh, up and up and up. While when the price is going down, you are actually gaining, uh, or you're not benefiting from the hedging of the USDC because as the price is going down, you are converting your USDC at, a, at an increasing pace towards Ethereum. So you're gaining more downside risk here while you are limiting your upside potential with this strategy. So in my opinion, this concentrated liquidity is great if you are providing liquidity for stable coins. In that scenario, it is great. But for any other asset, it is not good. And if you read these documents here, they are only talking about uh, stable coin assets as well. They are not talking about ETH, uh, USDC pairs. They are not talking about the impermanent loss, uh, which is the exponentially higher risk right now with the uh, version three than it was on version two. Some other issues I have with Uniswap version three is front running. Uh, front running is still possible on Uniswap, Uniswap version three. So if you broadcast a trade on Uniswap, it will get uh, executed when miners actually uh, publish the trade on blockchain. But if there's a bot that can see that you have a transaction pending, they can front run your transaction uh, on top of your transaction if they just pay more gas fees. So sometimes you can see if a whale buys a lot of uh, stuff or on a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, then a bot will front run that transaction and basically make the spread from that trade. 
uh, basically an, a small time quick arbitrage between uh, a whale buy and someone else. And uh, the other issues I have is uh, the LP tokens, if we go back to the pool here, the LP tokens are non-fungible liquidity pool tokens. So currently a lot of the yield farming is done on fungible LP tokens. So you can stake your LP tokens and you can trade your LP tokens and you can store your LP tokens as, as ERC20 tokens. But with this update, your uh, LP tokens, liquidity pool tokens are non-fungible tokens, NFTs. So they are not changeable because your price range is different from other person's price range. So it's just much, much harder to utilize this uh, for DeFi protocols. I'm sure there will eventually be ways how you can utilize this, but it is not uh, interchangeable with the current DeFi e ecosystem or even easily interchangeable because every uh, liquidity pool token is now different and unique. So it will be a little bit harder to interact with this. So. That's another issue I have that it will create some friction with uh, adoption for this protocol. Another issue is that uh, concentrated liquidity, uh, it just seems a little bit complex for the casual users. If you want to benefit from this Uniswap version 3 in its fullest extent, extent then you will probably want to use these uh, concentrated liquidity uh, things, but it just sounds a little bit complex for the casual user. So all in all, it's a great update. Uh, the It's an amazing thing that it will go on optimism, but even that has issues. So let's talk about this one. So on, on Unchained Podcast, there was an article, I will link this in the description as well, uh, or a, an interview with Antonio Juliano, who is the founder of the decentralized exchange DYDX. And they were talking about scaling solutions for Ethereum. And they were actually talking about optimism as well. So for uh, Anthony is saying here this, that so for anybody that's kind of familiar with optimistic rollups, one of the drawbacks is that you actually cannot withdraw from optimistic rollups for you know it depends on the configuration but oftentimes up to a week. So there will be a week before you can withdraw liquidity out of uh, the optimism rollups. So that's a definite downside. Uh, that your funds are stuck on Uniswap. If you don't mind that, then that's fine. But to counter this, they are saying here also that uh, layer two scalability solutions work. By the way, they are using something called Starkware solution as a optimistic rollup. So what this means is that they are actually minting blocks every hour. So instead of having to wait for a week, it will only take... Uh, a less than a day before they can actually uh, you can get your funds out of the optimistic rollup but with the optimistic rollup that uh, Uniswap is going for I'm not sure if they're using Starkware or not so it could take a lot of uh, time to get it out but there's another way how you can actually take your funds out is uh, let me see if I where what did I save it here was it all the way here here uh, do, 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 do. it's going to you can of any of this roll up here so any optimistic roll up protocol you basically have to have enough capital to cover an entire week's worth of withdrawals for the system if you want to have faster withdrawal times and this for uniswap is pretty good because their treasury has almost a billion dollars worth of capital so the waiting time is maybe not a week it could be a little bit lower or maybe they use Starkware or not I don't exactly know what they use but this could be an issue also that the optimistic rollup will take a lot of time before you can actually withdraw funds from Uniswap when the time comes so those are basically all the downsides that I was able to think of for Uniswap all in all I think it's a good update uh, some could say it's great and the concentrated liquidity is great for stable coins, but it still has a lot of issues with this protocol. Impermanent loss is nowhere near fixed. Uh, you cannot provide liquidity with single assets. Uh, gas fees are basically the only thing that's superior to 
what it was before. So all in all, that's basically my assessment for Uniswap. I don't think you should go ahead and sell everything, every other decentralized exchange out there. It took Uniswap about uh, a year or a year and a half to deploy this version three. And this is the thing that we got. And this is one of the reasons why the price has actually been falling down because these are the only additions that we currently have on uh, on this protocol. So maybe it will be great in the future. Maybe there will be more updates. But for now, I'm not super excited for Uniswap version three. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this analysis. If I am right, if I am not, if I'm wrong, if the impairment loss is not as big of a deal as I'm explaining here, because this is just me trying to speculate how it would work based on what they wrote in their article here. So let me know what you thought of this video. Hope you liked it. Consider subscribing and I will see you on the next video.